There's hardly a day that passes without SpaceX grabbing headlines, whether it's a successful launch, the completion of a critical mission, or testing their Starship prototypes. They're always making waves. Recently, they've been in the spotlight for one of their final tests before the next big Starship launch. They conducted their final static fire test. In this video, we'll see how this important test went and what it tells us about the next Starship launch. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on Starship and SpaceX's other exciting news. SpaceX recently reached a crucial milestone with a successful static fire test of Ship 30, following two earlier cryogenic tests on May 7th. The static fire test is one of the final steps before a full launch, serving as a simulation of the intense conditions a rocket will face during takeoff. It involves fully loading the rocket's fuel tanks, chilling the engines, and firing them at full power to verify engine performance, fuel flow, and control systems. This allows engineers to identify and fix any problems before the actual launch. On the day of the test, the ignition process began with the fueling of liquid oxygen and methane, and frost lines soon appeared on the rocket, showing that the liquid oxygen was properly loaded and ready. After about 45 minutes, venting streams below the test stand signaled that the engines were chilled and ready to fire up. When the test began, all six Raptor engines ignited simultaneously, producing a thrust of over 1,000 tons. The entire process lasted only four to five seconds, but generated a powerful flame while kicking up a dust cloud far less intense than in previous tests. This short-duration test confirmed that Ship 30's engines could ignite together under controlled conditions. The static fire test put on quite a show, with smoke streaks swirling around the ship upon engine activation, creating layers that looked like a tornado. This effect was enhanced by the flames below. Similar visuals had been seen in earlier tests, but dust clouds usually hid them. SpaceX celebrated this achievement with a tweet hinting at the next steps for the Ship 30, which might include more single-engine static fire tests before moving on for upgrades. SpaceX might keep the S-30 on the test stand for more static fire tests or move it to the production site. This is probably the last static fire test for the ship at the current site, before moving to the Massey test site and its new flame trench system. Before this test, SpaceX performed other important tests on Ship 30 and its predecessors. These included cryogenic proof tests, where the rocket is filled with super-cold liquid nitrogen or oxygen to ensure the tanks and plumbing can handle the extreme temperatures and pressure of spaceflight. Pressure tests helped verify that the rocket's tanks could maintain structural integrity. Additionally, spin prime tests were conducted to check the propellant flow through the engine turbo pumps without actual ignition. Aside from Ship 30, another significant milestone was achieved with the Falcon 9 rocket. On May 8, SpaceX launched 23 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit from the historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. This latest launch broke the record for the total number of space shuttle missions launched from that pad, marking SpaceX's 83rd orbital launch from LC-39A and surpassing the 82 shuttle flights that launched from the same pad during the shuttle program. This impressive count includes 74 Falcon 9 missions and 9 Falcon Heavy missions, underscoring SpaceX's rapid launch cadence and their ongoing progress in reusable rocket technology. Launch Complex 39A has a rich history, being originally constructed in the 1960s for the Saturn V launches during the Apollo program. It then became the primary launch pad for the Space Shuttle program, serving as a platform for some of NASA's most historic missions until the shuttle program ended in 2011. After SpaceX took over, they modified the pad to suit their Falcon rockets, adding their own launch infrastructure while respecting the historic nature of the site. Now LC-39A is central to SpaceX's launch operations, hosting their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions, including crewed missions to the International Space Station. This particular Falcon 9 mission was the third launch of booster B-1083, which had previously flown the Crew-8 mission to the International Space Station and a Starlink mission. 
The booster's successful third flight reinforces the reliability and efficiency of SpaceX's reusable rocket program, showing how repeatedly using boosters helps SpaceX significantly lower launch costs and increase their launch frequency. After delivering its payload to orbit, booster B-1083 returned safely to a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This kind of recovery has become routine for SpaceX, allowing the booster to be refurbished and used again in future missions, aligning with SpaceX's goal of creating fully reusable rockets. This mission also had significance beyond breaking records at LC-39A. It marked another successful step in SpaceX's goal of building a global internet network through its Starlink satellites. While SpaceX is making history with these achievements, their competitor Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is facing challenges, encountering another delay after the recent test was canceled yet again. Boeing's Starliner program has built up a bad reputation because of repeated delays and technical problems, adding to public scrutiny and lawsuits linked to whistleblower complaints. The whistleblowers have claimed that the company ignored safety warnings, rushed production, and employed questionable practices. This has drawn criticism from the media and led to legal troubles for Boeing. Of course, delays and reschedulings are common in the space launch business, but no spacecraft has faced as many setbacks as Boeing's Starliner. The first uncrewed test flight in December 2019 was cut short due to software problems. In 2021, stuck valves grounded a crucial uncrewed demonstration mission for nearly a year. The first crewed flight has been delayed several times, from July 2023 to April 2024, and now targeting July 21st at the earliest. Each delay adds to the growing concerns about Boeing's ability to deliver a reliable spacecraft. These constant delays and challenges led NASA to raise concerns. It's important to note that Boeing is financially responsible for these problems due to its fixed-cost contracts with NASA. All the repeated delays have costed the company nearly $900 million in extra costs so far. The latest test, which was set for May 6, saw Boeing's Starliner mounted on top of the Atlas V rocket at Launch Complex 41, with two astronauts on board. Despite the support from Musk and other industry leaders, the mission was canceled just hours before liftoff due to an oxygen relief valve issue in the Centaur stage. The malfunction was detected about two hours before the planned launch, which delayed fuel loading. United Launch Alliance canceled the mission, unloaded the fuel, and began troubleshooting. It's important to note that the issue was with the launch vehicle, not the Starliner spacecraft itself. Valve issues are relatively common, particularly when using cryogenic fuels like liquid oxygen. The Centaur upper stage relies on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, a combination that requires careful handling and frequent testing. In comparison, SpaceX's Falcon rockets use Merlin 1D engines with kerosene-based fuel. While this fuel is less efficient than liquid hydrogen in specific impulse, it is generally considered more stable and less challenging to manage. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.